This is the Bar Stewards Enquiry. You are talking absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. In, in what way? You were an underachiever in life. You were, I saved your bacon one time. You were gone. Well, I couldn't save you. I, I, I don't know but you said the right thing. But that's why you don't know anything about racing, John. I, I didn't say I do. Right? I'm saying that what, what have you contributed to racing? You are one of these take-out merchants. Take out all you can. Urban. My name's Lee Keys of systembet.co.uk and my counterparts tonight are John Lang of John Joe's Blogspot on Facebook. Great page there for you to check out. And Deborah Kepe uh, chiming in with some interesting thoughts for us uh, on our topics this evening. It's a busy show, so I'm going to get straight on with it. And we have three questions this evening, um, the first of which I will put to uh, John and Deborah now. Um, first one, I mean... This is about Gordon Elliott. I know a lot have touched on the subject this week, uh, but how how long do you think a lesser known trainer than Elliott would have would have got? Um, and would the BAT have dished out a bigger ban than their Irish counterparts? That's from Carl Swanson. John, I shall start with you on this. Um, a lesser known trainer. Well, I think really if um, it had been somebody who wouldn't be missed. If that's the, the phrase, um, I think the uh, the authorities would have taken the opportunity to be seen to be doing a proper job on him, and they probably would have kicked him out. Um, I mean, I'm not talking middle ranking type trainer. I'm talking like your, your farmer with three novice hurdlers and a couple of goats, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. but I think they, they would have been gone uh, right or wrong you know um, because we know from experience that they love making an example of these people um, whereas a trainer the size of Jordan um, is not only going to be missed I mean you're talking a lot of jobs um, that would go quick, you know. I mean, there are ramifications for warning off people with operations that size, and they can't ignore that. I yeah. wouldn't want them to ignore that, you know. Um, there's an awful lot of people could have been put out of work last week through no fault of their own, yes, please just through God and being a blithering idiot. You know, I believe um, Gordon has around uh, 70 staff, I believe. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, you, you wouldn't want to tell them down the road. Um, no. And like he's our love, it, um, I think it, it has to be a factor when they're discussing what to do with these people. You know, I mean, if it's somebody with 30 staff, what do you do? You know, I mean, you both tell them down the road. It's... What's gone on is a horrible shame and all the rest of it. But, yeah. but you've got to consider the kids that's working for them. Yeah, you know. fair points, John. De- Deborah, have you um, any any view on on this? Um, I mean, you know, I agree with John. I think that um, definitely, if it were a lesser trainer. Um, a lesser stature of trainer, then I think they would have come down harder. Um, and I think, you know, I know Lee Motter's head today, he's took a load of stick, hasn't he, on Twitter for um, suggesting that the Gordon Elliott runners shouldn't run at um, Cheltenham. And, you know, people have been saying it's not fair on the owners, it's not fair on the staff, which, you know, I kind of, I kind of agree. But, you know, I think there's... A balance. I think, you know, I think they should have kind of made a bit more of an example of him. I mean, the press, the the press statement that he came out with last night was just ridiculous. The one that was subsequently um, deleted from Twitter. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, and and to me, I mean, that kind of that's just to me that doesn't seem like justice has been done, and it's made me quite frustrated and angry, really, because you know, yes, he's done wrong. Yes, what did he say last night, Deb? Sorry, John? What did he say last night? Um, he issued a statement saying <coughs> that um, Denise Foster was going to 
take over the yeah. training. Mm -hmm. um, but then he would be on hand as and when for assistance. Brilliant. And I'm thinking, so what is, I mean, this is, a ban, it's not a ban, is it? The only ban is, is you know, you're not allowed to print Gordon Elliott's name on a race card. Virtually saying he can't go race. If that's, if that's what, you know, they're saying. And, I mean, he hastily kind of deleted it um, and replaced it with one that kind of didn't mention the assistance. But, but you, know, it, you know, there needs to be a balance. You know, I know well, he's vital. You know, he's a big name. He's, he employs lots of staff, and I agree they shouldn't lose their jobs. But, but you know, surely, you know, they could have put something in line so that he, he, he suffers, you know, he suffers himself, like, you know, not to earn any money out of racing while he's supposedly banned, you know? I mean, will he still be getting an income? You know, he's still going well, to be in, in the yard, you know? It's, he'll definitely get an income because it's still his business. Yeah, so, you know, it's just when is a punishment, a punishment, you know, it doesn't just, it doesn't seem like much of a punishment to me. It was fine, um, wasn't it? Well, apparently yes. the fine, I read the fine was for legal, um, legal fees or something. That's what I read. Perhaps that's wrong. I just read that on Twitter. Well, yeah, 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 whatever it was for, his pockets had a tap, hadn't it? It was fined fifteen thousand euros, I believe. Right. Um, the, ma mm. the maximum the Irish, the, the maximum the HRI can fine is a, a twenty thousand euros, I believe, um, on their uh, their league table of fines. Yeah. Um, which brings us nicely on to the first. We may as well take in the first discussion point on the back of this question, uh, which is bans, 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 and do they work? Um, and I mean, this for me is. Uh, a, a, a salient topic I, I don't think they do personally uh, as, as Deb's already pointed out Denise Foster takes over on the licence um, Debs have you any view um, regarding bans if they work or not? Um, I mean I think they work if, if they're enforced <laughs> with some kind of, of structure um, you know it's the Irish Horse Racing Board of you know, released a statement saying he's banned, but, you know, obviously he's not because he's still going to be, you know, there to assist Denise Foster. So, you know, there's if, if they're going to ban somebody, then there must be rules and regulations attached to that ban, surely. And then I think, yeah, bans will work because, you know, he's, he's going to be, you know, racing is obviously his life. He's going to lose his life for six months as a punishment, you know, and that would certainly put me off from from any misdemeanor in the future you know i just think you know and it is you know it's, it's been a, you know he has brought the game into quite serious disrepute disrepute hasn't he absolutely you know i, I mean that's that, um, that's not in, uh, that, i mean that that's not in in sort of uh, dispute um i'm just thinking about bands is, is how do you police this i mean well, you, you can't just, can you unless you kind of tag him at Calentra, yeah. put, put a tag on him and say, you, you don't, do not go near those gallops. If we know when you're going to be near those gallops, you know, it's just, you can't enforce it, I guess. But Well, for me, I, and this is where I stand on it, that I, I, I would do away with bands. Um, and mm -hmm. what, I'd put in place, what I'd put in place instead, because it's impossible to police them, um, you hurt them where it hurts them most, and that's the pocket. Mm. And I'd have, I'd, have, I'd have a fine base system where I'd have a maximum fine, say, of 100,000. And I would have fined him 100,000 because that hurts him, right? Mm. And, you know, and um, you make an example of him. You could do the, the trial by media, social media these days, which is what happens mostly. <clears throat> but if you take 100,000 100, pounds from his, from his personal fortune and with, with a premise that it'll be doubled on, a, on, a, on, a, on another offence... Mm. Um, they don't do it anymore. Charles Burns was taking, well, allegedly taking twelve thousand pounds out of stock horses on ACP. Um, Charles Burns had a winner on Friday night in his assistant trainer's name. Now bans clearly don't work, so you you have to get rid of rid of bans. If you find Charles Burns under a thousand, then that's taking away profits that he's probably made from laying them on Betfair, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think that's the solution. You, you hit them hard where, where everyone's in this game for money. You know, they love the horse. Yes, I get that. But, but 
pure and foremost, it's about the cash. And if you hit them with big cash fines, they'll stop doing it. Same with the whip bands, same with the, the jockeys that get repeated whip bands. Uh, I mean, you've heard the phrase before, I'll pay you fine. I, I, don't, don't, the owners have said to jockeys, you know, give an extra two, I'll, I'll pay you fine. Now, that stops that. If you give a jockey a £10,000 fine for going over the, the uh, permitted use of the whip, all of a sudden the owner's not chiming up saying, I'll pay you fine, which is usually pitiful. Um, and it, it's... it's these are the things that I think bands for me clearly don't work. John, your opinion. Yeah, well, there was a, when, he, when his band was announced, there was a big clamour for praises for Elaine Burke to be the top trainer at Champion Festival, wasn't there? Yeah. Um, you know, because I mean, this is how bands have evolved, haven't they? You know, um, you go back to the Calbert situation and he just had zero impact, did it? You know, Elaine took over. End of story. Basically, he just wasn't punished. Yeah. You know, there, there wasn't a ripple in that business, really. Then you go back to when jockeys got banned and when they really meant it. Now, uh, this is actually before my time, but I'm, I'm fairly well read on it. Um, when Piggott got banned in 1954 for the ride on Never Say Day, and word was out that the stewards were out to get him because of his riding style and technique and move over granddad, I'm coming through and all this. <laughs> and uh, his ban included the fact he couldn't go racing. He couldn't work in any yard. Uh, the on, only yards he could work in, not connected to his father's at all. He wasn't allowed in his father's yard. Um, yeah. So I think he had to go to Jack Jarvis. And that was a sort of ban that had an impact, you know. And then I think the him back about Cambridge and Tambury was supposed to be stood off until the end of that season. And that was from Roy Lascott. And that was for a riding offence. You, yeah. well, no, you know, not being funny, but n nobody even came off their arse. You, you know, I mean, you, you wouldn't see a ban as draconian as that these days. Well, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I mean, the, 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 the ban for... Um, did you see the incident with Paige Fuller and Lorcan mm -hmm. Williams? Unbelievable, uh, yeah. I mean, four days for those guys. I mean, that's the, just ridiculous. The, well, <laughs> well, Paige well, Fuller got four days for being accosted after the race, didn't she? I mean, it's it's just literally. I I, I cannot I cannot put into words how I think that's so wrong. Professional sport. It's happening at sort of thirty mark, thirty thirty five miles an hour. Um, you're bound to have jockeys with altercations. You, you took my mm. ground. No, I didn't. Blah blah blah. To give them four days for publicly showing emotion. On, on a, mm -hmm. and Lorcan, we, Lorcan Williams was in the wrong um, but uh, you know Paige did not cut him up at all from what I could see um, but anyway that's by the by the fact is they've taken away four days earnings from 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 these jockeys that now nah, Paige Fuller say over them four days might have got eight or ten rides it's like that's like two thousand probably two thousand pound in riding fees and potential prize money earnings and for what two thousand you know I mean for not having an altercation. I mean, it's not. I, I don't. I don't think that's unprofessional, Deb. Do you? No, I don't. And it, it's ridiculous. If if they banned every footballer that had a verbal altercation on the pitch, well, there'd be no oh. football whatsoever, would there? Yeah, it's we, just, we, we, we wouldn't get to half time. We would, exactly. Is that exactly. you well, wouldn't get well, five, minutes, could, five minutes? Paige could not win there, could she? No. You know what I mean, because basically, Paige responds. She gets four days. Yeah. Paige sits there like a little crate and mouse and everybody in the way and room knows she's a pushover. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, as a, as a woman in a predominantly male environment, you know, she's she's got to be tough. She's got to hold her, you know, she's got to hold her own, isn't she? She can't just cower down. And fair play to her. I was team Paige all the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah I, me as well. Um, I, I was, uh, I had to watch the replay back about. I, I got it on rewind on racing TV. I'm trying to spot the 
the, well, the I altercation. asked them to give her for Diocletian, so I was hoping Larkin had just put one on it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a few quid as well. Um, yeah, right, okay, we'll move on to the se second question. That's the, the first topic of, of, the, of the show. Uh, the second question um, was uh, uh, John Hines on Twitter, a, a good listener of ours. Um, he's asking about the Dukes. How prevalent is it, and how does it play any role in your betting? For example, you'd happily have, happily have a big bet on one because you suspect the trader has the juice. John, does it, is it prevalent in your betting? No. No. <laughs> it, possibly after, after an event, when uh, if I've got something that's got stuffed by something that's found a leg, yeah, I'll, I'll maybe sit there and think... God, that must have been Joe Stubb. But yeah. pre-race, no, to be honest with you. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll look at it. It wouldn't even enter me head who I was betting and whether I thought they had Joe's or not. Um, I had my list of trainers who I like betting. Um, again, it's because I think the good trainers. It's not because I think they're using them up. Um and no, you, you know, I, I just don't uh, give, it, give it much thought, to be honest, you know. And I think it's like everything else, you know. I mean, you can go back to the, on the likes of Bravefoot and then we're getting doped, Doncaster. If, yeah. if, you get, if you get caught, you get caught, you know. I think if you, if you start trying to second guess who's milkshaking, needling, whatever, you know. I mean, you're just going to paint yourself into the far corner of the room and never get out. Yeah, I mean, for for me, um, I'm going to take a different stance to you on this because um, it is prevalent juice in the game, as we know. Uh, both the slowing down juice, which is ACP, as as uh, as has been demonstrated recently, and uh, the quickening up juice, which is can be anything from cobra venom, cobalt, you name it, lo loads of different substances that they've used in the past, um, and. And I think as well, if you look at the Cheltenham Festival stats, I think this this to me tells its own story. Irish train winners, 2000 to 2010, 65. Uh, since 2010, 129 winners, and 81 of those have come in the last five years. Now, we all know that they've got some cracking uh, breeding stock. We all know that, you know, that, that basically a lot of Irish buy the best as well as breed the best. Um, so I'm not, I, I, I don't doubt that. Um, but to me, um, from what I've seen with my own eyes and my own gut feeling, is that there's definitely some help there. Uh, and and I'll, I'll put that into context with a race that was run yesterday, the Moor Battle Hurdle at Kelso. Um, the shunter, Emmett Mullins, um, got an absolutely dreadful ride all the way around from Alan Corley, wide all the way, uh, which is not never good at Kelso because you're losing that much ground on the bends. Didn't jump well and still managed to win a £75,000 handicap hurdle. Now, now, you can say they're well handicapped, but this horse has been winning and winning and winning and winning. So, I mean, if you go back to um, the, uh, the, Cheltenham, uh, the, the, the Cheltenham handicap where Chatham Street lad won for, for Mick Winters, um, it, it basically destroyed them. It won by 15 lengths. Its next start in Ireland was absolutely underwhelming, well, well beaten. And... The, the levels of consistency with the Irish horses in terms of, you know, amazing performances at, say, a festival meeting compared to the rest of the year um, or in any other race, you know, come to, come to think of it, is, is I think it's there to see. Uh, Deb, do you have any, you have any views on juice or...? Well, I mean, you know, wherever there's, like you say, wherever there's money involved, there's going to be skullduggery. And, but, Absolutely. yeah, to try, to, try, to try and second guess which horses you know have been you know given some illegal substances or or you, you know you could just you you you're never going to know are you you know um i do enjoy reading back the judicial panel reviews on the bha though um yeah quite a few flat horses have um been found to have metabolites of cocaine in their system i have to say um yeah which yeah which can't be off the ground patting them oh i don't I, is that, is it, is that how it works, John? Is that how it works? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I'm no scientist. Court, but... I'm no scientist, John, but I don't think that's quite how it works. Talking yeah. amateurs is not Paul well meant to have got more, they've got yeah. more than the jacket. I I think Jeremy Nasida is, uh, yeah, he's, he probably holds the record, I think, on, on the judicial panel reviews that I've read. So, um, so yeah, but yeah, you can't, I mean, you know, I, I'm not a massive betting person, but I, I think I agree with John, you can't really take that into play. You know, it, you, you know it's going to happen, you know it happens, but unless you've got inside info at the yard, you're not going to know for sure, are you? So it's probably best just to... Yeah, just not what think would, about what that. What take us a clue, Lee, that something's used up? You're, you're going to have a bet. Um, I often think sweat, sweated up profusely is, is a sign. Because um, um, I, I always love that one that they give on ITV Racing, where they say, oh, it's a bad thing, this, this horse has sweated up, it's boiled over. Mm. Um, I mean, you know you know what happens when they give, you give them Lasix in America? You know, basically the horse will... Well, it, it just sweats it. it it's sweating because basically it's, it's mm-hmm. deprived of yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, anything where a horse looks really on jig and really, you know, I, I mean, yeah, I know they can go keen, but well, put it this way: I, me and a, another professional gambler friend lost a fortune laying "Don't push it" in the Grand National because it absolutely was sweating heavily. Not no other horses in the race were sweating. But yeah. this one at the start, it was absolutely riddled with sweat. Mm. So foolishly, I thought that looks in terrible, Nick. Um, so <coughs> we ended up, we ended up absolutely taking a position, striping yeah. it on Betfair, mm. and the rest is history. Um, we spent the rest of the afternoon in the pub yeah. um, <laughs> after, after doing in far too much. Begging so I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so so sweating's a prevalent sign. I mean, also stable form. I mean, you look at certain trainers. That that I've sort of thought, you know, just come into form. Everyone puts it down to good feed, uh, just a, a batch of good feed coming into the yard, etc. But you know, basically, it's like everything. A- athletes are, are drugged. Um, you know, you, you look at Russians, Americans, even they've all been doing it since dawn of time. Lance Armstrong, Tour de France, etc. Yeah. You know, they're all at where there's money, and unfortunately, mm. you know, there will be certain. Substances administered, uh, not 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 to recreational use either, or maybe the case as well. But anyway, on to the on to the uh, third and final question. Um, uh, how many of the big moves on the betting exchanges would you say are down to big syndicates? Um, you know, using statistical models as opposed to punters with inside information. John, have you any any view on this? <laughs> Not especially. I mean, obviously, there's big syndicates operating on exchanges, isn't there? You know, I mean, how, how do you tell, really? You know, I mean, there's still some big players around, isn't there? Yeah. Individuals. Um, I mean, it's, it's a bit like the ghost scenario, really. I mean, I tend not to be that positive about who I'm playing against or what I'm playing against, you know, I think because. I, I, I genuinely think you can end up turning yourself inside out mentally, you know. You think, well, you know, I'm not playing against a stack deck here. As they still being ghost up, is there a lot of Canadian lads laying this one or whatever, you know? You know. But where yeah. do you go, you know? Um, I, I think you've got, you've got to, at some point, just say, hang on, I race raid, I study form, I'm picking them out. I'm sticking with this until it starts costing me money. And, and if, you, if you're ticking along at that age, I, th- I think you, you need to let some of these bullets bounce off here a bit. Yeah, I think, I think that's very, very good advice as far as I'm concerned. Um, I think sometimes the markets can send you absolutely bonkers in terms of why, why has this gone from five to four to three to one? Why has this gone from, you know, and... There are reasons, and sometimes there are there is skullduggery. There is, um, you know, different reasons. Uh, you could have. I mean, I mean, one of the one of the common things is uh, where you, shadowers and in trading rooms, in bookmakers, and say exchanges will see a certain punter that's very good, or say back to horse or laid a horse for a significant amount. That information then gets out. Uh, they feather their own nest, they pass that information on, and that does cause genuine drifts. Because naturally, if they know that a clued up punter is on a certain uh, horse or is against a certain horse, 
then then that they'll deem that as significant because this punt is a long term winner, um, and therefore that causes an exacerbation in in the market sometimes where you get a horse yeah. just drifting out like wildfire. I think that's one of the most common reasons. Mm. Um, as for like you said, you, but it can send you absolutely bonkers trying to think. Well, you know, is this off? Is this not off? I think you just have to put your head down. Uh, just you know, maybe cut your stake down if something drifts. If my advice is some something drifts massively in price, don't think about having too much more on because, and just say, it, and you can put down afterwards that the drift was significant and and did so and was worrying. So that's why you'd probably go a, a smaller stake. But yeah, good advice there, John, on that. I mean, I mean mate, think, it was about five years ago. It was a midway, and uh, I was I was playing on bets there, and. It, it turned out this was this was a footballer, and uh, some of the markets were ridiculous. You know, favourites were going from say tips on to two to one, you know, and things like that. Oh, it's not a great deal of liquidity there. Midway can scoot him sort of day as well, you know. Yeah. Um, but it was a footballer taking the review. You know, and there could be people there thinking, oh, this is a Canadian syndicate, this is a so-and-so, you know, I mean, uh, in the Armin's involved, you know. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what do you know? You know, I mean, uh, you, you start thinking like that, you might as well just jack it, really. Correct. Because what basically you're accepting that other people have got a better uh, opinion than yourself. And once yeah. you do that, you, you've lost your, your belief to actually totally. achieve... You, what you want to, want to achieve in the game, um, yeah. and that's how I see it. Once you start saying that someone's significantly better than you, then you know you've you've lost the game. You've lost. Um, so yeah, I totally agree. Right, I think that's all we can say on that one. Um, our next topic is drones and in running betting, which has become rather prevalent recently in in the uh, in the racing purse, etc. About drones operating on tracks um, in running bettors. Uh, taking advantage of the fast picks because they can't attend the race meetings. Um, John, have you any views on drones? Uh, I was quite shocked to learn from Deb earlier on that last summer, 14 drones crashed when uh, she was out Sunday and out the back of her house. <laughs> John, um, come on. That's because that, they were disgusted at the images, that's that, why. That, that was quite, uh, <laughs> Quite a surprising revelation. You know? um, I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, we'd all like, like a drone, you, you know, I mean, uh, yeah. the, the, the really, really useful bits of kit. Um, and it's going to get more and more prevalent, I think, because um, I think it's harder to get on track these days. Well, it's impossible to get on track at the minute, obviously, but yeah, yeah. I think, um, yeah. You know, if you're going to get on track to play live pictures, I think you're going to struggle. So I, I can say it, it, it could look like the scenes over the White Cliffs of Dover in 1939, you know, when the Luftwaffe were <laughs> zipping over and, uh, you know, Battle of Britain theme tunes going on and 633 Squadron. Well, that's, you know, it could be for some exciting scenes at race courses up and down the country. Well, I know Debs doesn't bother with him running betting. Um, so, I mean, <coughs> I'll fill you with Debs here. Basically, so drones appear on racetracks to feed back, you know, live picks or near yeah. as live. So then you can have a betting running. Obviously, there's see there's a before. delay, isn't there, on, on, um, on the team? Yeah, so you can get a yeah. slight advantage, can't you? Yeah. So, and... And obviously, it's big business. I mean, I mean, the the uh, for example, the, the money involved that you can make. Not it's not as good as what it used to be uh, back in the early two thousands, but it, nowadays it's 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 still the required uh, method of of of, of sort of uh, uh, technology that is needed to make the game pay if you're in running better, um, mm. so that you're seeing actual live picks. And mm. um, I mean, the, the fault I have with this is it's a cartel. What it is, the tracks um, take on box players. Um, so you, you turn up to the tracks when you, we were allowed to. You go in the box, you pay a fee to the track, which is quite expensive. Um, and you then have literally live picks and you can bet from the track. 
Now, the tracks are obviously objecting to the drones, not because of, oh, it's image rights, and, and, and they're not really bothered about that. They're just bothered at losing the, um, the, the, the you know, the... the, the the stranglehold on the on the game on, on their income. I mean, mm. we could, I mean, for example, if you sell, imagine selling twenty boxes, say at Doncaster for a year. Um, at, at say, um, I don't know how many meetings they'd have. Twenty meetings uh, might charge a thousand pound a meeting. So that's that's so that's twenty thousand times by twenty. You know, that's that's four hundred thousand pounds going to going to Doncaster. You know, that's mm. a lot of money. So they're going to object to anyone that's going to destroy that cartel. Um, and as I said, the, the solution really is, if they don't want drones, then both SIS and Racing TV need to supply and demand. You need to supply a product that everyone can use, uh, and it, uh, uh, you know, a faster picks kind of... This, this is where we're getting to it, isn't it? You know, I mean, the, yeah. the standard of the pictures is an absolute disgrace, in all honesty. I mean... Uh, Yesterday I was on the phone to the Ginger Hitler when uh, a race was taking place. Uh, it was one of the uh, Newbury ones, I think. Umbrigado's race, Newbury. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, he's still mourning about Umbrigado just getting duffed when I'm telling him it's won. And he, he, he's, he's in fourth and he, he's, he's chuntering down the phone to me. Because he's watching video. Be- yeah, uh, video. and I say, well, shut up, you've won. You've won, it has passed the post. It's over. You know. <laughs> That's it's, a shit, Rich won. Uh, yeah, I, I know, it was a bit, a bit depressing that he actually won for him, but, you know, there you go, you can't have everything, can you? Yeah, no. Oh. But, you, you know, I mean, he's, he, he's the kind of a furlong but he had not that. I mean, what chance has he got if he decides to have a bet in running? That's it, really. Um, I mean, that's summed up, really. Uh, it's it's an unfair advantage that it will exist whilst um, uh, the, the racing pictures won't come up to scratch. They could do it. They could certainly do it if they wanted to. Um, they could provide a service that people could pay for. Everyone could access it from home. But for some reason, well, I've just explained why the tracks are making so much money from... Uh, how far behind do you think the back fair pictures are, like? The Betfair pictures on video uh, that you get are about 1.3 to 1.5 for racing TV pictures. Mm. Um, ATR, I, I, I believe, similar, but the, 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 the problem is that it's it's very stuttery. Sometimes it's very unreliable. Um, oh, ATR's like passing in yells, isn't it? Yeah, and I, I, think, I think a drone could get you there in about, from what I've re- the research I've done, in about, about 0.6 to 0.8. Uh, so you, you're getting possibly towards a second advantage, which in the closing stage is quite big. Yeah, but yeah. It, it's an interesting topic. But as I said, it, it's um, it's something that can be solved. But for some reason, they don't. They've never wanted to solve it. So let, let it is be. There, is there not a safety issue as well? You know, because you can uh, get any um, any Tom Dick or Harry that's had no ex- real main experience flying a drone. Sending yeah. a drone over to a race course to try, you know, to get his mates to get the advantage and win a bit of money and not be very experienced at flying it. You, you've got the visions of a drone taking a rival out in a photo finish here, haven't you? <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, the, the they thing is, crash, most... they could crash on the track, they could. I don't know that. Yeah, that, that's one of the things. Like, he he, he talked about these lads that's worried about juice and uh, who's betting and laying it. You know, I mean, you think you've got all that crap? There's hundred yards to go, and a bloody drone swoops down. Exactly. And the <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I could sort of counter that. That the, the, the drones are off track. Um, the, the the law is if you fly, if you as long as you're approved by the CAA, uh, which I bet mon- many of them aren't, but. If you are approved by the CAA, you can fly where you like as long as it's not on, not above race course land. So you could mm. basically fly it above next to the next to the track, which is what they do. And they've got big zoom lenses on the drones oh, right. that, okay. that, that zoom in and, and follow the horses round. So there's actually no danger to the horses. Oh, um, yeah. um, it's it's the only the only thing the reason why there's been a drone crash recently and it wasn't on track; it just crashed next to the track in some farmland. Was that you're probably you, you're getting inexperienced pilots as a rule, mm. um, 
you know, if you're using qualified pilots to fly your drones, then then there shouldn't be an issue or any safety issue, like mm-hmm. they claim. Like I say, it's just, it's just a cartel that they just want to protect their own track income on that one. Um, right, we'll move on. Um, we were going to do the uh, uh, cricket fund story that John's got for us, but we're sort of running short on time this week. Um, and mm-hmm. I think we'll save it because I'm going to say we've, we've got lots of shows uh, that will be be quiet, et cetera, et cetera, and, we, and we, we've certainly less to say. Um, so we'll move on to the um, Jibby Lindley section. And I know um, Debs was impressed, it's so impressed by... Uh, now, normally we, we reserve sort of non, non, non-triers for this, but I know Debs was so impressed by one yesterday over jumps, it got quite Aww, excited. It did. Yeah. I mean, for a confirmed flatty like myself... Um, yeah, I was really impressed with Cloth Cap, and I enjoyed watching him so much. He's, he's just a lovely little horse. Um, his jumping is just superb. And, yeah, he gave me the feels, as the young people say nowadays. <laughs> he yeah, did give yeah, me the yeah. feels. And, um, yeah, um, yeah, I hope he does well. I hope he gets the ground. I'd, you know, I don't think he needs it too soft at Aintree. But, um, but yeah, I am looking forward to, to seeing him run around the national yeah. campus. Yeah, it should be should be a good watch. So, yeah, he was my little star of the day. Cloth well, uh, I, I'm sorry we didn't record on Friday for, for, for listeners, but John also mentioned uh, Cloth Cap in his bets. I, I actually put them up um, online, um, uh, John's selections, and, and John mentioned how he thought Cloth Cap was, a, was an absolute good thing, John. Well, I did, really, because I just didn't think the handicap had made anything like it. Enough of an adjustment for the way it won at Yeovery. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I know there's, there's limits to what they can do, but uh, I would have said another £8, really, on, on top of what he gave him for Yeovery. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe he wasn't favourite yesterday. Um, yeah. You know, the, the way he won that yesterday, I mean, I, I'm absolutely still on bonking confidence. He'll, he'll go to Liverpool and make them look like eggs. Well, it's interesting what, you know, what you said about when he won the Hennessy, um, the Ladbrokes Trophy, as it's now called. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, you, and, you know, you, you said it, it, it looked a different, it absolutely routed them. And it, it did, it looked mm. a different horse to previous years. Um Maybe rejuvenate, maybe sort of like come alive by front running tactics. As soon as they bombed it off, mm. it just it just gets on with it, attacks all the fences, and just gallops everything into the ground. I must admit, I'm very keen in, in the Grand National. Um, but like Deb says, I, I also agree that you know we we, we don't want um, possibly ground too soft. Which I mean, one wants- worry really with the National would be that if you. Say so, so they've got it in their heads now he has to lead. And you get two or three maniacs going off like nutters. Yeah. And he, he gets drawn into a, a big speed kill up down one of the beaches first time. Yeah. I think that might be an issue, but other than that, I have no issues at all. Yeah, um, I'm, 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 I'm cloth cap all. We're all cloth cap here at the bar, Stuart. Yes, yes, cloth cap. Um, I've got one to finish the show off with that, that's quite exciting um, for your trackers. Um, it's one actually I stumbled across on, uh, which saved me a, a job in um, going through everything in a rush this week, what's happening in the last week. Um, I, I was looking for a horse uh, that ran on Saturday and I was watching his race, Hydroplane, and I noticed this one um, quietly running into fourth. Um, the horse of John Joe O'Neill's on the 11th of December, a horse called Cur Serene. I think that's how you pronounce it. Cur Serene. Um, C O E U R space S E R E I N. Um, ran on the 11th of December behind Bushy Park, completely not off. Um, obviously, the, the ride was spectacular. And if you look before that, when it ran, you'll also find that it wasn't busy either. John Joe O'Neill uh, on it or, or, uh, for its last four starts, and he's just not put it in the race, simple as. Um, now, it's got a mark of 113. It costs a whopping 72,000 euros as a three-year-old, uh, which is which is massive for a, for a national hunt store. Um, so they must have liked it physically, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's bred well, but 72,000 as a store is going some at three. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
as I say, they've got a mark of 113, which it will absolutely make mincemeat of. In fact, I'll go as far as to say this will end up being possibly 140, 150s and beyond. It, I think it's that good. I, I, I know he's got plenty under the bonnet with this, and it's going to be very exciting when the handbrake's lifted. So that's Cursorine, um, spotted on the 11th of December at Doncaster. You, you might want to check out its other runs if you if you watch it. And that's to finish uh, a grand show off. I've, I've really enjoyed it, guys. Um, uh, it's been a good show tonight. Uh, next week, we've got the usual Friday show covering the uh, weekend's betting action. And uh, get your questions in. And we like your questions to dissect. And on Sunday, um, we are doing a Cheltenham uh, Festival special sermon. Epic. Um, yeah, absolutely. And John is absolutely frothing at, at the mouth. He's, he's chomping at the bit for this. He's, he's done. He told me last night he's done three thousand words um, alone for the, for this uh, up to now. So he's he's, he's absolutely. That's, going that's for dedication it. for you. It 3, is three thousand words. Is. Wow. It, it is. It's you know. I mean, it's like he hasn't done three thousand words since he were since he were fifteen. You know. I mean, <laughs> he had lines at school. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's in detention. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I've, I've got the best back to lay I've seen him in life. For Chelsea. But there you go. There you go. You don't want to miss this next Sunday. It's uh, it's my me and John going through Cheltenham, uh, telling you where it's at. This is what we do. Um, uh, you know, we, we bet for a living, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and we want to share our thoughts with you next Sunday. So don't miss that one. Uh, thanks for listening. So we'll see you all next week. Bye for now. <laughs>